Hello everybody, so this is the first class of the statistical learning course. So to start this first class, we will go through uh, the uh, chapter covering preliminary mathematical material, which will come in uh, handy in subsequent chapters. Okay, so this chapter is not uh, meant to discuss statistics yet, or at least not statistical learning topics, but it will only introduce uh, mathematical background needed to better understand subsequent uh, material. So in this chapter, we will discuss notions of quadratic forms of a vector calculus and of a vector or matrix probability. So you might have encountered these notions in other classes. If so, feel free to skip them. But uh, I encourage you to go through this chapter just to make sure you have this background covered. Uh, and if you haven't seen it previously, then it's the right time to learn it. So the first topic we'll discuss is quadratic forms. So consider three quantities. A column vector A, which contains elements A1, A2, until AN. A column vector B, which contains elements B1, B2, until BN. And finally, a matrix, which contains elements Cij. So I is the row of the matrix, row index, and J is the column index of the matrix, where I and J go from 1 to N. Okay, so here this is a square matrix of dimension n by n. The, uh, the following proposition says that if we uh, uh, calculate the following quantity, A transpose times the matrix C times the vector B, where this is all matrix products, then this expression can be written as the following. So it's the sum for all uh, indices i and j going from 1 to n. So this is a short notation for a double summation. So here, if uh, s some people might denote it instead, here's the, the pencil. So this is sum for i goes 1 to n and sum j goes from 1 to n. Okay, so this here n and this is an n. Okay, so this summation here is in fact a double summation. So it's the sum for all i's and j go from 1 to n of a i c i j b j. So this is the sum of all possible combinations of elements of the vector i, uh, vector a, vector b, and corresponding elements of the matrix C. Okay, so here this is often, uh, this expression will be often encountered uh, subsequently. So this is why it's uh, worth having a theorem or at least a proposition uh, that, that allows simplifying these expressions here. Okay, so this is a bit cumbersome to use. So sometimes it's more easy to write the, the, the left side. Okay. So let's prove that. Well, the proof is quite straightforward. There, there's no fancy mathematics there. It's simply taking that product, writing the product, and then looking at the result. Okay, so here, A transpose CB, it's the vector A, times the matrix C, times the column vector B. So first, uh, to go from here to here, we can multiply the first vector and the first matrix together. So here, how do we do that? The first uh, column of the result is uh, this times this plus this times this, etc. plus this times this, which is the sum for all indices i go from 1 to n of ai, so the element here, times the corresponding element here, so ci1. So this is for the first column, and we can do that for all subsequent columns. So for example, for the last column, it's going to be exactly the same thing. This times this guy, plus this guy times this guy, etc., plus this guy times this guy. So the result is exactly the same, but instead of having elements of the first column, we have elements of the nth column. So the, the one here is replaced by an n. Okay, so here we obtain that result. 
and then to go from here to the last line well this is simply the the, the product of two vectors one row vector and the column vector so it's this summation times b1 plus this summation times b2 etc plus this summation times bn so if we do that this entails uh, summing for all j's from 1 to n of bj times the corresponding summation here which is a sum for all i's of a i c i j which gives that result okay so no fancy math here this is just a kind of a cumbersome matricial product but uh, it's it will be useful subsequently to know that this expression here can be written as this or vice versa this matrix product can be written as this okay now uh, we will talk about uh, Victor a few uh, results or at least definitions of uh, vectorial calculus so here let's consider a vector x of variables so x is a column vector of x1 until xn and then let's consider another vector column vector u which contains elements u1 until u1 okay so x and u are have the same dimension here and let's consider a function f real function f which takes an element of rn so an n-dimensional real vector and which returns a real number in one dimension so for such a function uh, we can define uh, well we can define the following operator okay so here uh, del over del x this is the uh, let's say gradient operator so this is the operator which differentiates uh, some function with respect to all elements of uh, the, the the vector x okay so here we can define this operator through the following definition df over dx where x is a vector this is df over dx1 until df over dxn okay so here because we differentiate with respect to a vector this is equivalent to setting up a vector where that vector contains the derivatives or partial derivatives with respect to each element of uh, the vector x okay and here this um, d uh, derivatives vector we're going to assume that it's a column vector okay so here this is simply a definition when a function f has n arguments let's say x1 until xn then differentiating that function with respect to the vector x simply means we take a vector where each element of the vector are the partial derivatives of f with respect to uh, the various elements of x okay now uh, let's have uh, some results that we will uh, find useful later on we have the following first result the vectorial derivative with respect to x of that product so u transpose x this is equal to the vectorial differentiation of x transpose u which is the vector u itself okay so first this first equal uh, equality it's obvious because u transpose x it's equal to x transpose u this is simply the scalar product between x and u okay so this is u transpose x x transpose u it's the same thing so it's obvious that the their derivative must be the same but now what we need to show is that if we want to differentiate uh, this product with respect to x we have only u okay so in in one dimension this is very clear so if you have x and u being scalars instead of vectors then uh, x time u when you differentiate with respect to x the x disappears and you get a uh, u okay but now uh, why is that the case in a vectorial setting also well the proof is pretty direct for this one it's because u transpose x or x transpose u this is as we said the scalar products between x and u so uh, this is the sum across all elements so i goes from 1 to n of xi ui okay so if we differentiate uh, okay let's say we differentiate this guy u transpose x with respect to uh, 
some, let's say, x1, then uh, differentiating this with respect to x1 would clearly be u1 because the first term, x1, u1, when we differentiate with x1 with respect to x1, the x1 disappears and the u1 stays. And all other terms don't depend on x1, so they sim simply vanish. So we have this result and we can uh, do that. So this is for x1, but we can do that for all the x's. So derivative of u transpose x, let's say we do it with respect to xn. This is going to be equal oops, to un. So we can see that the vector of derivatives of this expression with respect to uh, x1, x2, x3 until xn, the result is simply the vector which contains u1, u2, u3 until un. So the outcome is the vector u here. Okay, so I'll continue uh, with the, the, the next result. Okay, so here, 